Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining SLI's second Uncovering the Secrets of Transfer session. Uh, my name is Husok Lee. I'm a second year bio major here at Foothill College, and I'm a SLI STEM impact team member, and I'll be leading today's transfer panel. Uh, before we start, uh, before we get started and introduce our panel for today, uh, we would like to know more about you. Uh, could you all please tell us your name, pronouns, major, and what you'd like to learn from today's session on the message slot underneath? We appreciate your um, participation. And again, we welcome you. Um, as many of you know, the Science Learning Institute, SLI, uh, is a department in the STEM division at Foothill College that aims to promote equality and equity for students, especially in underrepresented groups in STEM, by providing different resources and programs. Uh, this is the second session of the SLI transfer panel series titled Unlocking the Secrets of Transfer. Our goal with the series is to ensure that students are aware of the resources, experiences, and processes involved in transferring, whether you're transferring this fall or in the future. This session, we will focus on academic changes and adjustments after transferring to a four-year university. Our objective for today is for you to have a better understanding of the academic changes and gain confidence in your ability to adjust those settings. Um, now, we would like to introduce our panels who kindly agreed to speak with us today. Uh, could, we, could you tell us your name, pronouns, major, and school transferred? Um, could we start with Stacy, please? Yeah, hi. So my name is Stacy. My pronouns are she and her. Um, and I'm a biology major, and I attend UCI right now. Uh, Brandon, please. Hey everyone, my name is Brandon. My pronouns are he, him. I currently go to San Jose State as a computer engineering major. And Steve. Hello everybody, my name is Steve Silva. Um, but my pronouns are he, him, and I study mathematics and computational science at UC Davis. Thank you all for your introductions. Um, now we will transition into the first part of our session, of which we will be asking our panels a list of questions prepared. Uh, then for the second part of our session, we will have a short Q&A session where you will have the opportunity to connect with our panels and ask your personal questions about their experiences. Uh, we do have a link of example questions prepared if you need reference. Uh, please view the message slot um, finally, we will wrap up today's session with some final words. Okay, um, starting our panel session, we have our... you choose to transfer, your, uh, transfer to your school? We can start with Brandon. All right, yeah, so actually, so I transferred from Foothill to San Jose State, and actually before I attended Foothill, I actually went to Syracuse University up in New York. Um, so I ended up transferring back to Foothill just because um, I wanted to be more at home and, um, you know, like finish my the rest of my uh, my college experience here in California. And then um, I also wanted to. So I decided on San Jose State because um, I was studying engineering and I heard uh, San Jose State has like a really good engineering program. I also had friends that go there and um, could vouch for that as well. Um, they've had like great experiences there. So I figured um, since it's nearby, um, I could keep my part time job. You know, stack up a little bit of money that way. You know, I have something saved up for when I graduate, and then I can have like a pretty nice foundation. So that's why I decided to go to San Jose State. Heard uh, great things, and so far I've had great experience as well. Steve. Yeah, for me, actually, I went to UC Davis straight out of a high school, but then after like a year and a half, I got dismissed for like bad grades. Um, so like. I kind of just struggled there, but I always wanted to go back. And then I took some time like off school and then I went back to community college, I went to Foothill. And then after maybe a couple of years there, I went back. So that's kind of how I got back to them. Uh, and Stacy. Yeah, so I started at Foothill 
Um, and I was there for two years. After those two years, I transferred to UCI, uh, mostly because of the location. It's really safe here. It's quiet and it's not too busy. And I don't really like the city. Um, also, I'm planning to go to graduate school and UCI has a lot of opportunities, especially research, which looks really good on your application if you're planning um, the pre-med route or pre-dental or any pre-graduate school. Thank you. It's interesting to hear how people um, put consideration into their schools. So um, until the next question, could you please share your experiences with your chosen major? What are the pros and cons with your major at your school? Uh, could we start with Stacy this time? Yeah, so as a bio major, um, the pros of being a bio major at UCI is that they have a really good STEM program. So if you're like biochem or biochem, uh, anything in STEM really, they have a lot of resources here um, to ensure that you succeed. Um, they have peer tutoring, they have pretty decent teachers um, with good like averages, I would say. And everyone here is really hardworking, so it really encourages you to do well also. Um, for the cons, I think being a bio major at UCI is pretty difficult. Um, the average for most operative bio classes here around 50 to 60%. Um, but I think if you put in the work, you'll definitely um, beat the curve. It's doable, definitely doable. And also a con I would say is like, it's really competitive to be at the top of the curve. Um, I think you really have to focus if you really want to do well in your classes. I don't think you can fall behind. Brandon? Yeah, so uh, some pros about uh, just going, at least for uh, computer engineering or like engineering in general is, um, so actually there's an engineering success center at. San Jose State is actually located within the engineering building. Uh, all of the classrooms are in the same building, um, if not like be the building next door. So everybody like kind of knows each other and like you can get like really like um, familiar with like your professors as well as like the resources out there. There's also peer tutoring there. So um, if you had any help or if you needed any help, uh, you could get helped out uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I believe you just had a schedule appointment. So it makes it like uh, pretty smooth for that. Um, Cons, I'd say, is, uh, I mean, being, uh, it is a little tough, I'm not going to lie. Um, you will spend, like, a lot of time, like, when I mean, doing homework. Um, but, like, in terms of, like, difficulty, like, I don't really see a difference between uh, here and Foothill, along with Syracuse. At Syracuse, I was actually doing um, electrical engineering, but, like, it's all pretty much, like, difficulty-wise, like, the same. So I wouldn't get, like, too scared on that. Um, if you're you know, like if you're, uh, as long as you put in the time and like the work you need to do, um, you, you'll you be fine, you'll succeed. Uh, you should have like no problem. And then of, of course, if you ever need like any help, just don't be scared to like make that step and, you know, get some tutoring help or, you know, talk with a professor, see, if you can, see what you can do to um, like better yourself. Thank you. Uh, Steve? Yeah. So like the pros of math at UC Davis, I think, is I feel like it's a, compared to other schools, it might be like a pretty big department. Like we have our own math building, and like a lot of the math majors, like we have our own like undergraduate study room. So like you'll just run into people there in the math building that you have classes with. And lots of times like graduate students will drop by and like it fosters like a nice community because they're always willing to help. Um, so that's like pretty reassuring because sometimes you just are in classes and you just don't expect yourself to like like, how am I going to get through this? And then, like, you'll see another student's like, oh, yeah, I was in that boat last quarter, and they're willing to help you. Um, so it's really nice. Um, con is, like, it's just difficult. Like, I think that goes for lots of majors. Um, and then maybe because, I don't know if this is unique to math majors, or but, like, these people are really passionate. Like, like I like math, but I don't know if, like, I dream about it. <laughs> Like, lots of these people, like, they will be, like, it's very difficult to get into the office hours because, like, everyone is there. Like, you got to get there, like, 20 minutes late, and you'll still be, like, 10th in line or something. So, like, you just have to be, like, you got to want it more, which is, like, a lot of pressure sometimes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, 
I feel like these answers are pretty helpful for our students who don't really have an idea. But anyways, um, so uh, in continuation, what is the biggest difference in your experience studying at Foothill and your transfer school, especially related to level of difficulty? Uh, Brandon, please. Yeah, so uh, honestly, like the only difference, uh, well, actually the main difference. So I actually, when I went to Foothill, um, it was all online only. So I didn't really have to like commute to campus, for example. Um, at San Jose State, I do. That's pretty much like the only real change, like like the big change. Um, but yeah, like as I mentioned before, like difficulty wise, like I've noticed it's, it's the exact same. Um, other than uh, Foothill was actually a quarter system. So I felt like Foothill kind of moved by like really fast, whereas like, at San Jose, it's semester system, so it feels like uh, the pace is a lot slower, and like, uh, like you have like a little bit more time to like just like interpret like concepts like that are uh, that are taught in class, for example. Um, so yeah, I just feel like the change of pace was slightly um, it, it, the the change of pace was definitely a, a big change. Um, so Foothill was faster uh, because it's on a quarter system, and then uh, San Jose State, it's so I feel like it moves slower just because you have a lot more time. Um, but yeah, difficulty wise, it's just about the same. I get about like the same amount of homework for um, as I did at Foothill, um, except now I'm just meeting in person. So the biggest thing also is is the commute. Like I actually have to commute to class now, which which is fine. I can manage that. Thank you. Can we, can we go to Stacy? Oh uh, yeah, sure. So um, for difficulty wise, I definitely think UCI is a lot more difficult. Um, at Foothill, I was taking around like maybe 18 to 21 units per quarter. And that was like enough for me to maintain like a decent GPA. But at Irvine, I can only manage up to like around 12 to 16 units to maintain the same GPA I had at Foothill. So I definitely think um, it's a lot harder, um, especially since most classes are based on a curve. So you're not really, it doesn't really matter if you're getting an A, it matters if you're beating everyone else in the class. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. And also um, to fix this, I decided to just not overload on units. And for example, this quarter I'm taking biochem, which is one of the harder classes for a bio major. And what I do is I will just, I'll take a hard class, but I'll clump it with um, an easy class like evolution and ecology and then another filler class, just so you meet those 12 units. Um, and yeah, that's how I fixed my issue for that. Uh, before we go to um, Steve, um, did you feel like any of the STEM courses in Foothill helped you prepare for, or like get you prepared for um, your classes in UCI? Um, yeah, I think it did. Um, but I wouldn't say it was like like um, a major preparation. Um, mostly all the classes I took at UCI, it's kind of like you get in and that's like the first thing you learn. It's like you don't really need to know everything before taking, like you don't need to know the prereqs. Like you'll enter in and then you'll learn it and then you just have to learn it fast. Like, um, for example, I took genetics at Foothill and I took advanced genetics at UCI. I don't think genetics at Foothill really helped with advanced genetics at UCI. They're totally different, um, but it really depends on the class. Like for biochem, I think like OCHEM maybe helped a bit, but not, not by a lot. Like I wouldn't say it prepares you a whole ton, you know? Okay, thank you. Uh, can we go to Steve now? Yeah. Um, I think for the most part that like the level of rigor changed. Um, I think it's just more like the level of accessibility to help. I think in Foothill, the class sizes were smaller and maybe actually the professors were a lot better because they like full, they like focus primarily on teaching and like being like a good resource to the class. There's lots of times at like a research university, they focus a lot on being like a researcher um, and then a professor. So it's kind of hard to um, get as much of their attention and help. But I think 
the level of rigor for the most part is the same. It's just like now there's a little bit more extra barriers in the way. Yeah. Um, does any of you have similar thoughts on the differences in teaching styles or professors from here in your schools? Uh, any of you? Um, yeah, like honestly, yeah, like at San Jose State, like I mentioned, at least for the, like I can speak for the engineering department, but like um, the ones I've had, like they're really like helpful. Like you can ask them questions and like they'll help you out. Um, like usually, uh, like at least at my experience at Syracuse, like um, like what Steve mentioned, like some professors are like research based. So like they'll, I mean, they won't really help you out. They're like busy all the time. It's kind of hard to get their attention. But at, at, whereas at Foothill, you know, you just send an email. It's a, or because I was online, but I, I just sent an email. I get like a pretty um, prompt response. Uh, as soon as I state, like they they take care of you pretty much. Um, I honestly haven't had any issues with any professor. So um, at least for that part. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. Oh, sorry. No, 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 please go ahead. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. I think at um, UCI, the teachers really want you to succeed. They really don't want to fail you. So um, usually the curve is pretty good. Um, I remember in my advanced genetics, I think the average was like a 60% for the grade distribution. And then he curved it a whole letter grade just so people wouldn't fail. Um, but I agree with um, Brandon that accessibility was tough. Thank you. Um, so, uh, furthermore, what differences did you experience in finding, I guess this is um, extended on the follow up question, but what differences did you experience in finding academic help, especially in like a new and different grading or semester system? Um, how did it affect you and how did you deal with the changes? Uh, can we start with Steve this time? Um, I don't know if I experienced, um, hmm. I think just for me, the biggest thing was just like, and this just carried over from Foothill, but like being able to form study groups. Um, I think that is like what made the biggest difference for me. But as far as like grading, I don't think there's too much of a difference, except there's probably a lot more leeway for the curve in Foothill. Like, I feel like generally I learned the content better and that was more reflected through my grade. Whereas like maybe here at UC Davis, I feel like I don't know the content as well but because like the curve is really great and everyone is struggling, then we'll get like a decent grade. So I think that's the biggest difference for me. Uh, Brandon? Yeah, I think in terms of finding help, um, at least with... Uh, there are like scheduled office hours sometimes, but like I think most of the time you got to schedule like an appointment um, through like the uh, like the SJSU portal. Um, I think that's like the only main difference, but I mean, it's pretty straightforward. And then, like I said, like there's a success center that like, so if you needed like additional tutor, let's say you couldn't get the help, uh, you could like schedule an appointment with like a, like a, either a peer tutor or a, um, or like maybe another professor that may have time. Uh, like they have like a bunch of options for you to choose from. And Stacey, please. Yeah, for uh, UCI, it's kind of different from what I experienced at Foothill. So every lecture you take, um, for a bio major at least, every lecture you take, you have a discussion section. And usually those discussion sections are optional TA hours. So you can choose to go to them or not. But those optional TA hours um, are basically just office hours but you're not talking to your professor for help, you're talking to the TA um, where you can like get help with um, questions or homework or whatever. Um, so that's one form of help that UCI, UCI offers. Um, but if you wanna talk to your professor, they do have office hours separately. However, it is really hard to talk to them. There's gonna be a lot of students um, in those office hours, um, but you can always set up an appointment also. And those were the biggest differences mm -hmm. that I experienced. Um, 
what kind of different um, classroom experiences did you have, um, like compared to Fifth Hill in your schools? Wait, what do you mean by classroom? Maybe, um, uh, so in Fifth Hill, especially for STEM majors, there's lecture, lecture times and lab times. I wanted to know what differences in your schools do you have, for example, in lab or in lecture? Oh, okay. Yeah. So when you go to Irvine and you're a bio major, um, every lecture doesn't have a lab anymore. You're required to take two upper div labs um, separate from lecture. And then the rest of your classes, like upper electives or core classes, they're just lecture. Um, so by the time you transfer, you'll just have to take two upper div labs for upper div electives and then all your core classes that are required to graduate, basically, if that makes sense. Yeah. Is it different in UC Davis? Um, for UC Davis, kind of like what she was saying earlier, just like you get, um, well, we don't get labs as math majors, um, but we get do get discussions. So that's the difference with Foothill. So it's like we would have our three lectures probably Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but then maybe on like a Tuesday, like late Tuesday, you and like some other classmates meet with the TA and you get like more personalized help. But, um, and hopefully if you have like a good and kind of caring TA, like it really helps a lot and makes a big difference. How about in SJSU? Yeah, well, uh, just adding on to like what Steve said, yeah, for as far as labs go, uh, yeah, if you get a really good TA, like you'll have a really good experience with the lab. Otherwise, like you're, at least from my experience, uh, we actually had, um, so in, in my lab, we had one TA and then actually he bounced. Uh, he was very good. And then uh, we got a second one and it, it was just tough. Like everyone was just struggling. We couldn't get the labs done. Like it was a, it was, it was a struggle, but um, yeah, there, there are labs, well, at least for me, uh, yeah, there are labs you got to take. Um, also, uh, San Jose State's also impacted, which means that when you want to transfer, uh, they'll take a look at the classes you've taken. For example, um, let's say you want to transfer into computer science. Um, they'll lower the GPA requirement for you to get in as long as you take, I believe there's like seven courses you have to take. Like, for example, like all the calculus classes, um, maybe like an introduction to a uh, computer science class. So I believe it's like that for most majors. Um, so whether or not you want to get into like econ or um, I'm not sure if econ's impacted, but like as far as majors go, like if you want to do a transfer, just make sure um, you make you want to look at the school requirements and make sure it's not like impacted, or that way, you, if it is, like you know what to take, and um, whether or not it'll it'll be worth it for you to take it or not. Thank you for your insight. Um, so before we continue to our next question, I would like to talk more about the main theme for today's session, which is the concept of imposter syndrome. Uh, for those of you who are un unfamiliar with the concept, imposter syndrome is the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. So with this concept in mind, what experiences did you have with imposter syndrome and how did or how are you dealing with, with your experiences? Uh, can we start with Steve this time? Yeah, um, let's see, imposter syndrome. I definitely struggle with that. Um, it's, uh, it's like difficult because you, you like, I feel, I feel like lots of people tend to like downplay what they've accomplished and just see everybody else and you don't tend people don't tend to share like when they struggle so you just see all their highlights and you're like dang like I wish I was like that but I think just remembering like um that we're all here in the same place and honestly like the comparison like it, it there's no point in comparison like everyone has a different path um so just realizing that I guess that's kind of being humble, just like realizing like you, not that you don't matter, but like what, what like you are and compared to anybody else, like it, it really doesn't matter. Um, so just putting less importance on that. I think that that helps me a lot. Is there any specific experiences you had with um, dealing with it? 
Um, what would you mind to share? Yeah, I think just like me, because I got like dismissed from school and then I came back, I always felt like I have like a chip on my shoulder. I'm like, oh, I got to prove these people like I belong here. But like really like that just puts so much pressure on myself. Like I just want to be myself. We're going to Brandon this time. Yeah, yeah. So de definitely uh, imposter syndrome is like something that uh, has like affected me. It still kind of does like sometimes, but um, like what works for me is just like, like whatever tasks you have to like get done. Like if you keep telling yourself like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this. You're going to make it harder for yourself. And ultimately like you're going to spend like more time like either trying to avoid the situation, whatever it, like it may affect, like you spend more energy and like more time like trying to like avoid it and like just like, oh, like telling yourself I can't do this. But like if you just like face it like head on, and you know like try to like affirm yourself that like you can do it like i don't know how to describe it besides like fake it till you make it you know like it it that's what works for me is like you just fake it till you make it and like once you actually like get it done in other way you feel like so much better and you're like oh okay like i got that out of the way like i'm i'm good like and then like it, it becomes like practice basically like it's definitely hard to like curb but like i guess just like fake it till you make it at least that's what works for me and it, it should um uh, also what like steve said um like so like i'm the uh so when i went from syracuse to foothill um my a lot of my credits didn't like transfer over because it was i guess it's like a different system or something like that i like fought for it but i didn't get it um so i felt kind of like just like i was like oh man like i kind of waste i felt like i kind of wasted my time a little bit but at the same time uh, i was like i was like i felt like i was wasting like, a lot of time so i was like uh like uh, maybe I shouldn't like continue with engineering. Maybe I should try something else. It's a little hard. But then like I just was like, ah, oh, just give it a shot. Like, I mean, you like I enjoy like the um definitely like what I'm studying and stuff. So I was like, why not just like put in the extra effort, just like get through it, like I can do it. And you know, like I'm almost done. So it ended up working out. So you just gotta like face it head on and it should work out. Thank you. But Stacy. Yeah, so um, coming into UCI, I definitely think imposter syndrome was real for me. Um, I would say my first quarter, um, I felt kind of out of place. But um, as time went on, it wasn't so prominent of a problem. And I think my best advice for that was that um, the mindset of like everyone at the end of the day um, they're all the same. They're all here. And I think it's better to just focus on yourself and not really compare yourself because I know a lot of people fall victim um, into comparing themselves, especially uh, as a STEM major. You always feel like you're not doing enough because the other person has research. They have this, they have that. But honestly, it really just doesn't matter. Um, something that also really helped me was that I really think having good life and school balance um, really helped with that because um, I would always try to make time for things that would make me happy. So that would take off the stress of me feeling like I felt out of place. Um, and I think it's always good to go out and not study all the time because I feel like when you're in that zone of like, oh, I have to do well, I have to do well, you end up not doing well. Um, and I also think that everyone should have confidence in themselves, especially with what they're studying. Really um, set your time out for studying and then set your time out for having fun. Yeah. So as a follow up, um, I'm just curious if there is any stigma of being uh, maybe a transfer student or a community college student in your schools and um, do you see yourself different from students who've um, been there the whole time or been there the whole time, basically? Yeah. Um, I don't really think there's a stigma at UCI, to be honest. I feel like most of UCI's student population, I think a good amount are transfers anyways. And I also think like I know some transfer people here and they actually do better than the people who started here. So it, honestly, it's really just up to the individual. Like if, if you know the material you do and if you don't, you don't. I don't think it matters where you came from and I don't think it matters that you came from CC or not, honestly, that's my opinion. How about a UC Davis? 
I think it's the same way. I feel like I interact with a lot of people who are transfers and they do really great. Um, so yeah, I don't think there is any stigma. If there would be any stigma, I think it would just be from like people who maybe like our first years and never had a chance to go to community college. But like once you get in classes with people that are transfers, you realize, dang, they're here and they're kind of doing just as good as me or struggling the same. And it really makes no difference. Yeah, uh, same with San Jose State. Um, there's, I want to say like a lot of the schools actually transfers too. And they actually use San Jose State as like a gateway to like transfer to other schools as well. So a lot of, I ran into, or, or like I know a lot of students that are transfers. Um, even when we had like our orientation, like the whole auditorium was like filled up with other transfer students. And that was just um, like one of the days out of like the seven orientation sessions they had. So um, no, I definitely don't feel like there's a stigma there. Uh, you're running to like, you're running to so many different transfers there. Awesome. Um, so on to our final questions. Um, what is that? What is it that you miss most academically wise from Foothill College? Um, can we start with Brendan this time? Um, academically wise? Um, well, like, I guess the Zoom session. Well, honestly, like, just because like, I didn't have to like commute, like, it was very like, easy to just like, I don't know, just sit at my desk and just listen to the, the lectures versus like having to commute all the way to San Jose from like where I'm at. Um, it's probably the only thing I miss, but I mean, it's just, it's just part of it. Um, um, that's, I guess that's the only thing I miss. I love Stacey. Um, I think the biggest thing I miss is the ease of it. I think the classes were a lot easier. So I recommend um, finishing as many classes at Foothill as you can, because at UCI it's like 10 times harder. Yeah, um, for me, I think I just missed like the relationships that I had like with not only like my professors, but just like staff and like people who worked in different departments. like. I feel like it was a lot easier to build community. I've done that at Davis, but it took a lot more effort. But there, I think it was a lot easier. And yeah, so those relationships and just the location of Foothill, like it's very peaceful. It's in the mountains. Like it's nice. Like sometimes I get out of class and I'll like walk with a professor um, to like then to his office or something. It was just, it was really nice. Okay, so on to our final question. I would like to ask how um, you used your experience in both Foothill and your transfer school to um, carry on to your your uh, future academic goals. Because Stacy mentioned that she wanted to go to grad school. I'm just curious of how, like, what resources are there, what opportunities there are for um, STEM students in in a four year university um, since. Stacy mentioned, could we start with Stacy? Yeah, sure. So um, in Foothill, like obviously you guys are part of SLI. Um, I did SLI, um, the internship program, I think winter of last year. And that kind of helped me get research um, at UCI. And I think having research experience under your belt really helps you get more research experience because it shows that, um, it shows professors that you know a little bit about what you're doing. So then they have to train you less and they have to like not devote so much time into introducing you to every new thing. Um, and sorry, what was the other question? It was... um, what other like What other opportunities are there for um for STEM students in your school? Oh, um, I would say UCI is just a big research school. And if you plan on going to grad school, I know UCI has um, a med school. So I think, I think they do prioritize UCI students if you're trying to go to med school and if you graduated from UCI for undergrad. Mm How -hmm. about Steve? I think for me, um, 
Philip Hill like provided me like a lot of leadership experience and that or just being involved in I think Puente and SLI um, it helped me really transition over to when I went to Davis because now I have like a board position for this club called the Chicano and Latino Engineering Scientists Society and like we have like a lot of sponsors like Google, Apple, like just like a lot of really big engineering names as well. And like coming into that, like it's a, it's a lot of work to be on that board because you have to like reach out to companies. You have to like host resume workshops and reviews. And we even had like a trip to North Carolina where it's like, there's like a giant internship and career fair. Um, and like all of it's paid. So it was, but it just took a lot of like leadership skills and like kind of believing yourself and I feel like I got a lot of that like I got a good foundation from Foothill to help me transition to that here at Davis. Thank you. Um, Brandon? Yeah so uh, Foothill, so when I did the uh, STEM impact team like I definitely helped my leadership skills in terms of like uh, yeah just being a leader and then like just speaking out. Um, I definitely got like a huge confidence boost out of that like in my own abilities. Um, so like we talked about like imposter syndrome. I definitely was able to like manage that and come up with ways to like handle it. So I think that definitely helped me out a lot. Um, in terms of like opportunity, like post academic opportunities, I mean they have. Um, I actually don't remember if Foothill had uh, career fairs or not, but uh, at a four year at both uh, Syracuse and San Jose State, they have like career fairs and like uh, internship fair fairs where you get to like uh, you just bring your resume and then you just go on like a uh, there's uh, just like a wide. I mean, there's like a bunch of like different companies and like the representatives, you just talk to them. Uh, they'll give you like information about the company, what they're looking for, uh, and what to like about your experience, stuff like that. Um, so there's opportunities like that. There's also a career center at San Jose State that can also help with that. So like, for example, if you needed to, if you needed to help build in like a resume or um, you wanted to like touch up on it, um, they have opportunities for you to do that. So they, um, they do provide that. Awesome, uh, thank you so much everybody for sharing your experiences. I really enjoyed hearing each and every one of your stories. Um, now we will transition into the second part of our session, which is the Q&A session. Uh, because we have a small group today, uh, instead of going out to breakout rooms, we'll stay here as a group and we invite all of you to ask questions uh, to any of our panelists. Uh, so feel free to use the chat or come off mute to ask your questions. Um, like I've mentioned before, we do have a link for some example questions. Um, feel free to use them as reference. Um, yes, um, whenever you're ready. Um, yeah. I'll go ahead and start while we're getting everybody thinking of questions to ask. And feel free to ask questions that are not necessarily just related to academics. That's what we focused on today, but that doesn't have to be. Um, I'd love to hear from each of you just what was, I think, I know Stacy and Brandon, you're both in your first year at your transfer institution. Steve, you've been there for a couple of years. Like what have been some of your biggest learnings, academic, social, kind of generally um, about being a transfer, like going into this transfer experience? Yeah, so definitely there's a social difference. Like, um, I think like when you come in as like a transfer student, like, I mean, you're like brand new to the school, right? But like, there's like students that have been there for like a couple years, like before you. So they already kind of have like their, uh, like they know who to like talk to. Um, they have like their groups and all that. Um, I want to say like, that's a difference, but I mean, I haven't really had any problem with that. Like, I'll just like make friends with, you know, like whoever I'm like sitting next to like in class and then we'll just like, we'll go from there. So I do have like a, a network like that. Um, Yes, yeah, so there is that social aspect. And then what was the other half of the question, sorry? Oh no, just what's been kind of your biggest learnings in your first couple quarters or semesters? Okay, yeah. Um, and then just like the pace, just keeping uh, up with the pace, like, yeah, you get more time, or at least with me, like I have a, a bad procrastination problem. Um, so like at Foothill, like I had assignments due like pretty frequently, whereas at San Jose State, it's like, it's kind of stretched out. So I end up like, I'm like, oh, I got plenty of time to do it. And then I end up like doing it last minute, which, I got to work on. Um, I think just like finding the right pace for yourself and, um, you know, adapting to a pace whether or not your uh, school is quarter or semester, you know, if you got to make that adaptation, um, just figure out like a routine that works for you. 
Stacy, what about you? Uh, oh, sorry, Stacy or Steve? Stacy. Oh, me, okay. Um, yeah, I think the biggest thing I learned was that um, picking your picking your courses is super important. And if you, like, if you're planning to go to grad school, GPA matters, like, that's just what it is. GPA matters when it sucks. Um, but if you really want to keep your GPA high, I definitely recommend taking a good professor. Like, it doesn't matter if you have to show up at 6 p.m., who cares? Take that professor because your life is going to be a lot easier. Um, and I also learned that, so I didn't finish physics at Foothill, so I had to finish it here. Um, so what's annoying is that they only offer physics like once per quarter. So fall will be physics like 1A and then winter is two and then whatever, the sequence, right? So I couldn't take physics my first quarter there because I, I had other classes that clash with it. So make sure you try to finish your physics or OCHEM, your chem and your bio before coming here because um, you can even graduate early. Like I had the option to graduate early, but I didn't take physics. So I wish I did. That's something that I really recommend you guys do. Um, also, I think making friends here was definitely really hard. Um, but I think when you're um, like, you know, those big lecture halls, just try to like sit wherever and just start talking to them. And like, I, I met like one of my best friends here by doing that and it was like it was great um another thing I learned was that if you if you're um pre you're like pre-med or whatever try to get research your first quarter here so your fall quarter try to get it because it's going to fill up and usually professors will only take you during the fall quarter so right when fall quarter starts just start emailing as many faculty as you can to get internship or it's sorry to get research. And once you're in, you're in, like you don't have to worry about it anymore. Also, if you're a pre-graduate, um, sorry, I only know about pre-grad stuff because like that's what I wanna do. So I, I can't like help with like, I don't know, comp science stuff, I'm sorry about that. But um, if you're pre-grad, get your letters of rec in like as soon as possible, like get close to a teacher right when you get into your fall quarter. I did that. Um, my first quarter and I did it for like a bio writing class. So I already got my letters of rec like all finished. And then um, usually for graduate schools, you'll need like at least two letters of rec. So make sure you get like, get those on lockdown. And those are all my tips. Um, yeah, for the social aspect, just try to get as involved as possible. I think like maybe go down to like, especially like the first week or so, clubs are always like out in the front tabling. So try to get flyers and go to stuff. And you don't have to like be a member of everything, but I would say like, just try to feel out what clubs you like and what you think might um, you might enjoy. And cause lots of them will end up providing you like opportunities or connections. Um, so I think that would be my biggest tips. Um, what was the other part of the question? Or is that... No, it was, it was basically that, just like what have been some oh. of your biggest learning. So that's good. Oh, yeah. yeah um, okay, we have some questions. Um, first, we have one from Angela. So how was the transferring process as far as applying? And what, 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 what was your college? What was your number one pick college? Can okay, we start with Brandon? Yeah, so actually, um, so as far as that, so when you apply to a CSU, it's actually pretty easy. Um, I know, like, initially, when I transferred from high school to Syracuse, like, I had to do, uh, like, supplemental questions. There was, like, so I guess it depends on the college, but, um, like, some colleges will have, like, supplemental questions for you to answer, um, like, essay questions, and then you just got to, like, I mean, give your best answer, right? And then um, on top of that, they'll have, like, I think it's called the Common App. Uh, there'll be, like, another, like, main essay question. So some colleges may have, like, uh questions that are like just for them and then there's like a main like common app one that you gotta answer and then um but for san jose state there wasn't that actually you just apply with your uh transfer resume like from like foothill and then i also use my syracuse resume i mean transcript sorry and then um 
that was pretty much it. And then you just, uh, you got to select, oh, at least for certain, you got to select which courses match for like the courses at San Jose State. So you can like transfer them and like, so that you don't have to like retake them twice. That's pretty much it for the transfer. Um, and then, yeah, San Jose State was my number one pick just because I wanted to go somewhere local. Uh, I already had that experience with going out like really far from home. And uh, honestly, it wasn't really for me. So I just decided to just stick with it uh, locally at San Jose State. Steve? Which one was the question? Uh, it was the first one. So from Angel, how was the transferring process as far as applying? And what was your number one pick for your college? Well, for me, it was a readmission process. So I don't know how to answer the transferring part. I technically didn't do it. Um, but once I got dismissed, I just had to finish like all the lower division requirements of like math, computer science, um, and chemistry. Um, and then I would go back to my school. And then Davis, was it my number one choice? Uh, I don't think I really, well, I went straight out of high school, but I, in my head, I was just like, I'll just go wherever I get in. And that was like the one school I got into. And I enjoyed my time there. So, um, I really liked it. I think it's more about like, like what you make of it versus like what you think it'll offer you. Yeah. Stacy. Um, so for the transferring process, I just applied through the UC application website and I believe I tagged Irvine. And yes, it was my number one pick for the college. Awesome. Um, I think, um, Stacy mentioned uh, our next question from Yoon um, about getting internships. Um, for Brandon and Steve, did you have any chances to get internship opportunities after you transferred? So I actually haven't applied yet. Uh, I am planning to, but I definitely think like the uh, through the SLI program, like it's helped my confidence, and I I wouldn't like be scared to do it again. Uh, like right now, I'm just waiting for like the right time for me. Like when I know I'm not gonna be like overloaded with schoolwork, and um, I want to see if I, I want to see if I can land one for the summer, just because I'll be like more freed up. Um, but yeah, basically, I don't plan on taking or like going for any like during the school year, just because I want to like focus and like just hurry up and get my degree. And then, but at the same time, yeah, it is good to have that under your belt. Um, but, um, but uh, yeah, Steve. Yeah, I've been applying and I've actually, when I went to North Carolina, it was like a career fair, internship fair. And like, I got to do like on the spot interviews there. That was really intimidating, really difficult. So I'm, I'm glad I did it, but it was so scary because like on the spot, I'd have to like now like talk about like random math terms and some stuff I had never seen. So I'm like, oh, it's embarrassing. I don't know it. Um, but then some of them are just like personal um like questions and just like uh they're just trying to figure out who you are and if you'd be a good fit so yeah there's definitely opportunities and a lot of it too is just like linkedin you have to go out there and just send your name out and just reach out to people awesome uh on to the next question from lonnie um can you still take foothill classes after you transfer and have them count towards your major let's start with stacy um in my case, you can. Uh, like I said before, I didn't take my last two physics uh, series. And I asked my counselor here at Irvine, like, oh, can I take it at Foothill? Because I know the physics here is like a weeding class and I didn't want to go through that. <laughs> so I was like, oh, maybe I can take it at Foothill. So I asked them and they said I could, but I would have to finish it at Foothill. So whatever series you start at Foothill, you have to finish it there. Um, unless you want to restart the whole thing, the whole sequence over at your new university. Awesome. Yeah. Is it um, how about brand? Yeah, so just like Stacy, I didn't finish my um, physics either. I actually didn't even start physics at Foothill. I did it at Syracuse. Um, pretty much because I had a bad experience. Like I failed so bad at Syracuse for physics that like when they curved the grades, like I I still failed. And then when I had to retake it, I failed again, but thankfully everybody else did. So then I actually passed. So I've been like holding that one off, but um, yeah, you actually can at San Jose State. Um, there's only like, there's like a certain number of like credits they give you that you can use for like transfer for, or like from other schools. So like, um, I forget what the number is, but yeah, there's like a cap, so you can, but like you 
there's only like a certain amount of courses that you can do that to actually get your degree from San Jose State. Sweet. Um, I don't know how to answer that question, Max. I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Um, we would like to have more questions, but due to time constraints, I feel like we have to finish our Q&A session. I'm sorry if your answers, uh, questions wasn't answered, uh, but we will wrap up our session with one fine. I feel like this answer, you guys answered this question, but- um, Maybe you just ask Jaden's last question, because I think he's yeah. the last there and then, yeah. Okay. Um, so Jaden asked, how has your experiences been with professors? Are they consistent in quality, friendliness, and helpfulness? Or have you had mixed experience with good and bad professors? Uh, can we start with Steve? Yeah. So at uh, UC Davis, I've had a mix of good and bad. Not like that they're mean or anything. Well, some, they're not mean, but they're not like the friendliest. But maybe it's just like a language barrier or a cultural barrier. Um, but I think if you if you show up enough and like you show that you care about something, they'll like slowly warm up to you. But in terms of the good and bad, like some things that are unfortunate over there is like I've had professors where they since they're kind of like a maybe like a postdoc or they just finished their PhD, so they don't have like a lot of choice in what classes they teach. Like they will they'll be teaching a class. I've had a professor teach a class and he's like, and he told me, yeah, I never really studied this. Like, I'm just learning it before I teach it, like the day before I teach it. And I was just like, dang, I'm like, I'm paying, I'm paying this money and this guy's learning it right now. And then teaching it, I would experience, I would expect like a more, like someone who's like dedicated a lot of research and time to this, but it's just, that's just how it is sometimes. Um, Stacy. Yeah, I've had a mix of good and bad. Um, and basically how I find out if they're good or bad is I'll use Rate My Professor. Like that's the first thing I do. And then if they don't have anything for Rate My Professor, like most of the teachers here don't, you don't really know them. So I then I look at grade distribution, see how many got A's, B's, C's, D's. And I'll just choose the teacher that had the most A's in the class because you would assume it's easier. And that's how I get around. To finding good professors. Awesome, Brandon. Yeah, so I definitely use like rate my professor a lot. Um, actually, don't I think they changed it though, where like it's like new information. So like I don't think any of the old data saved. But uh, yeah, that's how I would like determine like my professors. Um, like if they had like a high rating, um, then yeah, I would like choose that over like another professor with like a low rating, where like everyone was like, oh, it's tough. Um, but. I think like you're gonna find like bad professors like at any college. Um, it just depends on like, I mean, yeah, right, like the professor. Um, but there's definitely good ones too. Um, I want to say I've had like more experience with like good professors than I have with bad professors. But at the same time, like I've used like rate my professor to help me out with that, so it's kind of skewed. But uh, but uh, yeah, that's how I would choose mine was just rate my, my professor. And if I didn't, then um, I mean, I would kind of just be like, uh. I would kind of just like take that chance and be like, okay, I hope they're not they're not bad. And sometimes it work out, sometimes it wouldn't. But uh, but yeah. Awesome. So um, as we're wrapping up, uh, the final question would be, what final advice would you have for your younger self when you were at Fahil before you transferred? Uh, could we start with Brandon? Yeah, you said advice to my younger self. Advice, like advice to your younger self. Before you before transferred. I, mm -hmm. before I transferred, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just give it give it your all and uh, keep it pushing. You know, you made it this far already, or however far you're along in the progress. Like, there's not too much time left for you, and if there is, I mean, who cares? Everyone works at like their own pace. Um, like, there's no there's not like one set like standard for you. Like, you can make it your own. As, and as long as you're like giving it your all and you're pushing through it, like, you got nothing to worry about. Take your time. Steve. Um, for me, I think it would just be to just be present because I feel like I always had the mentality and I always catch myself like, oh, I wish I had like this metric and this metric and I want to meet this goal. And I 
anytime like I achieve it and then I'm not even proud with it. I'm just like, now I want to meet the next thing. And I'm like, dang, let me just celebrate my wins from time to time. Awesome. Stacy. Yeah, I would just say give it your all. Um, being a STEM major is tough. You'll never get around it. But I mean, after transferring, you get through the hard part and not much time left. You might as well see it through. So that's my biggest advice. Okay, awesome. Um, so that was all we have prepared for today. Uh, we do hope this event was helpful for all of you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, SLI will actually be hosting several more transfer preparation seminars next quarter. So please look out for additional information of upcoming events in our um, e-newsletter, Instagram, or our SLI website. Um, to make sure we improve for our next event, uh, we asked all of you to please complete the survey before leaving. Um, it will be, you can either access it through a QR code or the chat. And um, also, Sophia is here to share about a project that SLI and the STEM Impact team is working on. Yeah, just really quick for our existing students. Um, many of you maybe have seen this already, but we are um, pushing out this survey for STEM students to get a better idea of your experiences here at, at Foothill in STEM. Um, and so we'd love to hear your opinions. It should only take about seven or eight minutes. And if you fill out the survey, you get entered into a raffle for some gift cards that we'll be distributing. So we hope you can do that too. Back to you, who's up? Yeah, uh, finally, um, there are links to our Instagram, Discord, and e-newsletter. Please follow us for more STEM-related resources like today's event. Also, um, if you enjoyed today's session, please share it with others. We will post it, post this session on our YouTube channel. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for coming and have a wonderful rest of your days. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank me. Bye, y'all. Thank you.